Hello everyone, today I am finally going to make an explanation video again, however I am not quite yet continuing my uh, Scramjet series yet. Instead I uh, wanted to take the uh, kind of fitting time right now, I will uh, reply to a request and kind of uh, widen out that topic. Uh, so today I will finally explain to you how uh, electric space propulsion works or what different kinds of uh, electric space propulsion systems there are and how each of them works in response to a request to explain how arc jets work. Now there are four main types of uh, electric space propulsion systems which again can be subcategorized but can also be uh, over categorized. Uh, there are two categories that are actually practically useful right now. Then there is uh, one category that is a uh, bit more uh, far-fetched. Uh, actually, it's not really far-fetched, but its uh, actual usefulness is still limited by its performance and is basically uh, still an engineering challenge and will maybe become useful in the future. And one is a rather exotic uh, space propulsion system, one of these more specific systems that only work under certain circumstances like solar sailing and is also uh, not currently really in use for anything. Now I'll start with the uh, first two, the uh, first of which are electromagnetic or electrostatic engines which uh, basically contain the um, most well-known electric space drives, the uh, currently also most used electric space drives, the uh, ion engines. And they're, they're basically all ion engines. There are, of course, some uh, special types of ion engines. What they do is uh, actually to use electromagnetic or electrostatic effects to accelerate uh, ionic particles or uh, ionized gas. The uh, propellant here is uh, any gas, usually one that is uh, well suited for this, often xenon. And this gas is uh, ionized, so the atoms of this gas are uh, charged and then they can be accelerated by an um, electrostatic effect with two electrodes or more or fewer depending on what specific type of design you make. You can add uh, magnets or magnetic electromagnetic spools to uh, guide them on, or to guide them in circles to gain uh, more cycles of acceleration and uh, increase your specific impulse. But the, the basics is always that you use an electrostatic effect, an uh, electric field to accelerate charged particles, which are then your exhaust, your propellant. They propel your spacecraft in the opposite direction according to Newton's third law as you accelerate them backwards. They can reach extremely high specific impulses so they can uh, be extremely propellant efficient but actually all these uh, electric engines are energetically really efficient but uh, that still means they're uh, limited by the uh, conservation of energy plus a little uh, thermal loss so uh, high specific impulse means that uh, you need a lot of energy per thrust as you have to apply the force that is your thrust over a higher velocity. Now of course the specific impulse of uh, iron engines can be throttled essentially, it's not really the engine throttle but you can uh, reduce the specific impulse of a uh, iron engine by design or in some models of iron engine also uh, during the flight, which does give you a better thrust to uh, power consumption ratio in exchange for a worse thrust to fuel consumption ratio or propellant consumption ratio, but it does make the engine unoptimal as the uh, thrust weight ratio in iron engines is usually not that great and uh, if you reduce the specific impulse of an iron engine to be around that of a normal rocket engine, you'll obviously come out at a much worse thrust weight ratio. So uh, 
it might be better to use a different type of engine if you don't really want an extremely high specific impulse. These actually range uh, up to 6000 seconds easily. The uh, second type of uh, electric space propulsion system is uh, the thermal electric engine, which actually is by definition an electric rocket engine and is also what was originally asked for. Uh, now these perform somewhere pretty much in between the iron engine and the ordinary rocket engine and they also work a bit like a ordinary rocket engine although their performance is a, a bit closer to the iron engine. What uh, they do is actually to uh, heat up some sort of propellant using an electric effect or an electric heating system and then expand it to an, through a nozzle just like any normal rocket engine and then propel it and gain thrust through the expansion through a nozzle just like a rocket engine just except uh, heating it up by a uh, chemical reaction in a combustion chamber it instead heats the propellant up by an electric effect on electric heat to which can reach high temperatures while uh, using pure hydrogen or pure helium as a possible propellant and thus can reach really high specific impulses of up to 1500 seconds or even 2000 seconds. Of course these can be theoretically combined with a normal rocket engine. You could have electric heating plus a chemical reaction but that would drastically reduce the actual advantage of a electric electrothermal engine because the big advantage is that you can heat up your propellant but the propellant can be a really light element like hydrogen which then uh, gives you a really high specific impulse for your temperature and to reach such a high specific impulse with a fuel mixture that actually contains an oxidizer and actually burns as well would mean that you would also have to reach really high temperatures. So theoretically combining a electric heating with a chemical rocket engine could give you a better specific impulse than a normal rocket engine but practically in order to reach a significantly higher specific impulse than a normal rocket engine you'd need incredibly hot combustion chambers and nozzles and that is just simply not quite practical yet. Then of course there are uh, different types of uh, electric heating engines. There are the actual arc jets which are relatively popular. They are uh, mainly developed at uh, ERS which is the uh, Institute for Space Flight System. The German acronym meaning uh, Institut für Raumfahrtsysteme at uh, University Stuttgart where I actually study and there are several test models uh, bound to fly uh, within the next time on a small communication satellite and on a uh, lunar probe and arc jets heat their propellant by uh, using an electric arc they are uh, have two electrodes, usually one of the electrodes being the inside of the nozzle itself, which of course then has to be limited to the uh, beginning of the nozzle. You uh, don't really want to extend that electrode all the way to the edge of the nozzle, which is, there are several techniques how you can do that. Uh, usually there's a gas film used to do that. And the other nozzle is essentially a rod inside the uh, fuel injection or inside the nozzle. And between these electrodes you have an electric arc, basically like lightning, and you use that to heat up the uh, fuel, which is not only quite powerful for its weight, but also uh, really efficient since the electric arc mostly heats up the fuel actually because it's the arc itself only is in the fuel itself the arc is a, basically a property of the fuel 
So the fuel essentially heats itself and most of the resistance is in the arc, so most of the power gets lost in the arc, so uh, most of the heating actually hits right in the fuel or in the propellant. And uh, there is a, a different main type of uh, thermoelectric engine, which is the uh, resistor-heated engine, which actually uses uh, some type of resistor, essentially a block of material that has a relatively high but not too high electric resistance, and you push electricity through it and it uh, gets hot, and then you can hold that hot resistor into the propellant and thus heat the propellant up, which is less efficient but uh, simpler to design in some ways. And of course there are theoretically other ways to heat up propellant electrically. Now the uh, third main type of electric space propulsion system is a uh, bit more exotic but actually really simple. It's uh, basically a light bulb or a radio dish. You can actually directly use light as your propellant. Now uh, this can spark discussions in uh, Facebook comments between people who think they know physics but it is actually long proven that uh, light has an impulse that's in our standard model of physics. Light does not have mass yet it does have an impulse and people will bring up the equation for impulse which is mass times velocity but that equation is only in Newtonian mechanics and not in uh, actual relativity so uh, for speeds approaching the speed of light that equation is no longer exactly true and at the speed of light you actually can't have anything with mass at the speed of light but at the speed of light something can actually have impulse but not mass uh, it actually has impulse according to its energy converted to mass by the equation of relativity it sounds complicated but what it basically means is that light doesn't have mass but it has energy and it has impulse and uh, its impulse is essentially its uh, energy divided by the speed of light which is rather small since the speed of light is huge so anything divided by the speed of light ends up being rather tiny but yes it does actually mean that uh, anything giving off light or any electromagnetic radiation does actually have a certain knockback according to Newton's third law which does actually still hold true in relativity. Uh, of course uh, many light sources give off light in several directions and so on but you can use mirrors or you can use a, a radio dish or a specially designed antenna and you can direct electromagnetic radiation or light or microwaves or radio waves or gamma rays or infrared radiation or ultraviolet radiation whatever you like into one direction and uh, get a Newtonian uh, recoil and uh, gain thrust through this of course it does have a very low uh, power consumption uh, thrust to power consumption ratio a very high power consumption to thrust ratio as that ratio is the speed of light that is still assuming a very efficient uh, light source but most light sources are actually very energy efficient which does limit your thrust rate ratio already because you need a heavy power source and then the uh, thrust rate ratio of the light source itself is usually not that great so uh, Yes, that does kind of demystify the EM drive. The EM drive is basically a glorified microwave. The reason that it uh, is said to be or appears to be physically impossible is uh, not because it doesn't use any propellant or any propellant with mass. The reason that it seems physically impossible is because there seem to be no radio waves escaping it or no microwaves escaping it, but there are 
and that is actually getting really complicated. The uh, microwave basically escape it with up being measured as escaping it, and that's where it gets uh, really complicated and not quite yet understood. But the idea of uh, fearless propulsion is not physically impossible and not new. And the EM drive isn't very good at it either. It doesn't have, it has a uh, worse power consumption to thrust ratio than uh, basically any radio dish. But it is quite interesting because uh, it's not yet quite understood, so we might learn something new about physics from studying it, and that might then help us design better space propulsion systems. But that's still uh, far off in the future. Then the uh, fourth type of electric space propulsion is uh, a bit more exotic. It's actually uh, as it doesn't really give you a uh, thruster that you could put on a spacecraft and you turn it on and it produces thrust uh, in its opposite direction and you can have several thrusters and maneuver your spacecraft and apply thrust, but rather it uses uh, outside circumstances, that's the uh, magnetic field-based propulsion, where y what you essentially do is you use electromagnetic effects to uh, propel yourself against an outside magnetic field. So it actually is comparable in some ways to a solar sail. Uh, it does use outside circumstances. You can use any magnetic field, like the magnetic field of Earth, or the magnetic field of any other celestial body, or a magnetic field uh, supplied by a space station with an electromagnet depending on uh, what you need for your specific concept, but uh, the idea is to use that magnetic field to uh, move a spacecraft, which I am not going to explain in full detail, but uh, there are several ways of course you can do that, and depending on what type of electromagnet you have on board and how you use it, you can then, for example, uh, pull yourself towards an another magnetic field source or away from the source of the magnetic field or uh, actually perpendicular to it depending on uh, what kind of equipment you have and what kind of concept you're actually making but they're not really in any practical use anywhere in the near future. So uh, this was a brief overlook of the uh, types of electric space propulsion systems there are. I hope this was kind of interesting for you. I'll, uh, I'm always open to uh, requests or questions. And as always, thanks for watching.